Hi guys, welcome to our channel of Sciences and Mathematics. Our topic for discussion today is a, a complementary topic, of course, on the reproductive system in humans. We talked that uh, one of the ways in which we're going to come up with a new offspring is through the, 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 the fusion of the male and the female gametes from the male species and the female species of organisms, of a similar organisms, in order to come with an offspring uh, that consists of a combined genetic material from the male and the female. So in this case, uh, we had looked at the male reproductive system and various parts and the functions. So today we're going to look at the female reproductive system and look at various parts and how they facilitate the process of uh, reproduction. So in this case, the female reproductive system consists of uh, various parts, which in collaboration with one another play the role of trying to or the role of uh, facilitating this production process. Now this female reproductive system is made up of uh, various parts, but of essence which we said which is uh, assisting in the production of the female gametes is the ovary, which of course I'm showing at uh, this specific point. So this ovary is an uh, oval shaped structure that lies outside of the pelvic cavity and are attached to the uterus by a membrane. There's a membrane that is a uh, which are ovarian ligament and there's a membrane that I'm showing on the right and left side. And as we said, uh, this female, I uh, mean part of the reproductive system, produce the female gametes that we refer to as ova or a single they refer to as ovum. Now part of, uh, like the male reproductive system that was also playing a role of production of androgens like uh, testosterone, the female reproductive system uh, also produces sex hormone such as estrogen, which of course we're going to see uh, its role when we are talking about the uh, menstrual cycle and the pregnancy. So in this case, uh, close to each ovary is a funnel shaped end that is uh, referred to as the fallopian tube or oviduct. It's a, a, at this end of the fallopian tube, there is a funnel shaped part that is known as a oviduct. And we're going to see that it plays a function in facilitating the movement of an ovum uh, from the ovary along the fallopian tube to this other part of uh, uh, the female reproductive system that we're going to refer to as the uterus or the womb. Now the functions of the fallopian tube, as I've said, is a part through which the egg passes down after being uh, released from the ovary. And the inner lining of this specific oviduct contain of course uh, uh, the some of the the cells or the parts that we refer to as cilia and cilia these are the the, the specific parts of uh, this fallopian inner walls of the, this fallopian tube that assist in propelling the egg towards uh, the uterus as it moves down from the ovary now the uterus at uh, this specific part uh, is a uh, consist of a thick walled uh, muscular organ in which the development of the photos takes place. Now, in this specific uterus is attached to the pelvic cavity by a product ligament, of course, to allow that it's uh, in position uh, for its uh, to play its role for nourishment. Um, I mean, the 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 the, 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 the process of development of uh, the photos. Now, one of the characteristics of this specific uh, organ that we refer to as the womb, of part of the female reproductive system that is referred to as the womb, is that it has the ability to enlarge considerably during pregnancy in order to accommodate uh, the developing fortus. And therefore, this allows <coughs> the fortus to develop to an optimum size before it is uh, mature and uh, it gets out. Now, this part of the, the human reproductive system for the female has a contact with the outside environment through this part of the canal that we refer to as a cervix and this, uh, this lower part that we are referring to as a vagina. Now this during part, this one acts as a part canal whereby uh, the, 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 the fully developed photos is expelled or given part through this uh, part canal. So this forms part of a one of its functions, as we are going to see later during our <coughs> discussion about uh, the process of uh, pregnancy. Now, in this case, the, the female reproductive system has got a, a cycle that it undergoes in order to facilitate uh, the continuous 
production of eggs on a monthly basis. Now it ranges between uh, 28 days in a month whereby a female, a full uh, female, grown female experiences what we call a menstrual cycle. Now we're going to see also that apart from that during the copulation, this part of uh, the female reproductive system that uh, lays just below the vagina is known as a, a vulva and it contains vestibular glands which release mucus during uh, arousal therefore facilitating the process of uh, intercourse so in this case we're going to see that uh, these different parts of the female reproductive system plays uh, uh, different roles and there are other parts which of course uh, we are going to mention uh, later like this and try to mention their specific uh, functions so now this basically refers to the inner and outer walls or the middle walls of the, uh, this specific uh, part of the womb and we're going to see how also they play a role particularly when we are talking about the process of uh, ovulation which we are going to mention later during the uh, or in a different video now as i said that the process of formation of uh, sperms in the male reproductive system is known as spermatogenesis a different process which occurs in the formation of uh, uh, the, the, the ovum is known as oogenesis and we're going to compare the two processes when we are trying to discuss and that is where we're going to mention of course other parts of the female and the male reproductive system that we haven't mentioned since they have their specific uh, roles so in this case i hope that uh, having looked at those different parts of the female reproductive system in conjunction with the male reproductive system we're going to see later in the process of our formation of the sperm and ova how these different parts play a role in, in order to ensure that uh, fertilization occurs now in this case i talked about the concept of our semen and the, <coughs> their areas or maybe specific conditions that will ensure that uh, this particular environment for the sperm and ova uh, are uh, optimal for it to fertilize uh, for the sperm to fertilize an egg and for the ovum to be fertilized respectively so i hope that uh, these two discussion for the previous video that we did on the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system are going to assist us in trying to understand how this process of uh, reproduction works so i hope uh, we'll have a catch up on the next video and why we're going to discuss about the process of spermatogenesis and oogenesis and how this uh, may be the compounded effect of uh, having a junction between these two parts of uh, the male and the female that meet uh, resulting in the process of fertilization so that is it for today guys uh, bye god bless